Good to see you again, friend. Did you find what you need? You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. Back then, I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could, and I was good. One night, I found myself in a tavern in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. You see, I was not the first to take refuge here. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. They are one and the same. The Romans call him Pluto, but long before that, my people called him Hades. My generation was wiped out, turned to gold, many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake, that Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were twelve of us in the beginning, but one by one, my friends passed away, some from malnutrition, others from madness and despair. It has been lonely. Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I would not seen another person in many, many years. Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. And sometimes, when there are Greek people living up above, I surface at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the temple of Demeter. The greater challenge is the isolation, so I like to imagine arguments, where I argue both sides. But, like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. As you wish. Ha! Huh. If I did, would I be living like this? Did we not discuss it at length already? Oh, I see. You're toying with me. Ha! Huh. You seek the plaque bearing the Egyptian inscription? It is a cursed object, and I would be happy to give it to you if Kabash had not already taken it. I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the Shrine of Persephone became the Shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. I 
I'm getting to that. You see, it was among these old Greek relics that I found the thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. We had no idea until years later when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel so far that we accidentally discovered another, an even older tunnel, which somebody had gone to great lengths to keep hidden. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. There are certain things you must see for yourself. Take this key. You'll need it to open the gate. I enjoyed our chat, but please, keep my presence here a secret, yes? Ah, you've returned.
Stop! Do not come any closer. Who are you? I am Kabash. Hmm. And let me guess. Another Greek or Roman come to loot and plunder the resting place of my ancestors, hmm? Hmm. Trousers, boots. Curious here. No, I suppose you do not. Then what do you want? Hmm. To what end? Hmm. That is welcome news. You really are not Greek or Roman, are you? I was planning to return it myself, but for now, I must remain. Here, take it and restore the honor of Osiris. Now, as for the other plaque. Indeed, I have it right here. I stumbled across a collection of dusty curiosities while searching for a place to hide from the hungry children of Amit, and there it was. You may not. In fact, I am about to destroy it. Because it speaks a treacherous, blasphemous lie. I will tell you, but first, do you know what this place is? Indeed, and I see you know our history. This is the Duat. See what has become of it. I have been down here for weeks, piecing together its story. And here is what I have learned. As Egypt declined and the Greeks had their turn to flourish, their souls came here in great numbers. But instead of adopting our ways, they copied and corrupted them. When they found the obelisk bearing the name Osiris, the true god of the underworld, they desecrated it removing his name and replacing it with <sighs> Hades. Even the ferryman of the dead, known to my people long before as Kerti, they renamed to Keron. As if that desecration was not enough, they built over this place, using it as the foundation for their own underworld, so that ours was forgotten. Hmm. <laughs> My only solace is that the Greeks then suffered the same fate when the Romans rose to power, renaming Hades to Pluto, and the cycle began anew.
It is inscribed with a script I do not recognize, but it is ancient, almost as if it is older than the plaque bearing Osiris's name. But if that is so, it would imply the gods of Egypt are mere imitations too, copied and corrupted from an ancient people who prospered even before us, and that my people did to them what the Greeks and Romans did to us. But this I cannot accept. I sense a deception. Perhaps it is the work of Set, the usurper, seeking to undermine Osiris once more. You will never know. This work of sacrilege must be destroyed, thrown into the black abyss below in Osiris' name. You are too late. It is done. It could not have gone any other way. It was Osiris' will. Now, the thing of evil you sought is gone. Why are you still here? I am from Rakotis, which you may know as Alexandria, the name of the city the Greeks built over it. I was a fisherman, like my father before me. Since the Romans had taken over from the Greeks, I took the opportunity to learn Latin and eventually traveled to Rome. When the fires broke out last year, I tried to help. I gathered terrified locals into my boat and led many of them to safety farther along the Tiber. On my seventh trip, a passenger demanded I wait for his brother. But we were full to almost sinking, and smoke was all around us. I told him his brother would have to save himself, and he tried to bribe me by placing a coin into my hand. When I refused, he drew a dagger and thrust it between my ribs. I awoke on the banks of the river to a stranger wearing a ram headdress. He said his name was Kerti, and at the time I simply thought him odd. It did not dawn on me until much later that he was THE Kirti. The ram-headed ferryman described in the Book of the Dead. This is where I belong, as caretaker of the memories of my people. If our ways are to be remembered, it falls to me. I think if someone is to break the golden rule, it will not be me, for I try to live as I always have by the command of the goddess Ma'at. Do to the doer to make him do. As for the punishment that will come from it, I finally understand why it has long been said among my people that gold is the skin of the gods. I do not know. What could possibly lie beneath the underworld? Perhaps it is infinite darkness. Perhaps it is the lair of Amit the devourer of souls. All I know is, it would be unwise to venture down there. Most unwise. Good. Be gone from this place. Wait. You are planning to go down there. I see it in your eyes. I urge you, return to the surface with the Romans. It will be safer for you. Thank <laughs> you.
When I told you that you would not find a way back up, that was not a prediction. That was a promise. You will die here. I disagree. I warned you against coming down here, against perpetuating this sacrilege. But you persisted. You have undermined and dishonored the true god of the underworld. How did you think this would end, if not with bloodshed? Very well, I will listen. But if I sense deception, or if you further insult my gods, I will carry out my threat. So tell me, why should I let you live after you salvaged this instrument of blasphemy? Why? To what end? But why? What business could you have with Osiris? Blasphemous fool! You have sealed your own fate. Good. I welcome it. You see, the philosopher told me that each time it breaks, Osiris bellows with rage, and his voice shakes the very foundations of the earth. I can only hope one more tremor will lay waste to this fragile place once and for all, and you along with it. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one.
Sorry, friend. Mind telling me who you are and what you're doing with that bow on your back? Oh, you sound serious. I'm listening. Yulia? Oh no. All right, I can do that. All right, let me see. Stop Fabia going in, but send the new arrival to the empty shrine. Understood. I'll go, but once I'm done, I'll need you to tell me how you know all of this. Name's Rufius. Better watch your step. No idea what you're talking about. No idea what you're talking about? Yes, so what? What are you going to do about it? And why should I? The one true God says... Uh... Well, I wouldn't get so angry if he wasn't so... You know. Where you're going with this? You'd better take that back before I make you. I have no idea what you're talking about. And unless you want your jaw broken, I think it's best if you don't ever talk to me again. friend I'm up welcome all right I can't believe this is how it ends oh no 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 all Pierce what are you doing yet that what I know I'm thank you know well you don't understand I don't too late if I back. Oh, really? That changes things a little. But we're still in debt bondage to that monster. Yulia and I are in debt bondage to Maliolus. We might as well be slaves. And that's how much it will take to buy our freedom back. Oh, ho, ho. So it's my fault. Is that it? You know what? Forget it. I am out. Wherever you are, 
Centilla, my love. I'm sorry. Ulpius, no! I'll have to, and I'd better. How come you're allowed a weapon and I'm not? Maliolus isn't receiving visitors at the moment, it being election day. Whatever. been elected your magistrate magistrate yes sir. yes thank you thank you i'm delighted and deeply honored to be elected your magistrate and, and now <coughs> and now i make this solemn promise to you good 
citizens of the day. And now, and now, and now, I make this solemn promise to you, good citizens. Um, under my leadership, you will finally enjoy the freedom you deserve. And, uh, yes, uh, no more shall you walk on up. Did you just scale the wall to my villa somehow? I must remember to have words with that buffoon Domitius. Well, why have you risked life and limb to see me? I'm Maliolus, and if it wasn't for this interruption, I'd be practicing my victory speech for the election later today. I'm glad you asked. I'll finally restore freedom to this city, just as I've been promising. These good people have suffered long enough under Sentius's tyranny. By declaring there's no such thing as the Golden Rule, it's a children's fable exploited by Sentius to frighten us into submission. Wait, don't tell me you've fallen victim to that monstrous lie? The person making a claim bears the onus of proving that claim. Can you do that? Can you prove the Golden Rule is real? Nonsense! There's no way you can prove that. If it was real and you'd seen someone break it, then you'd be dead already. What? Oh, ho, ho, I see what's happening here. Another poor, vulnerable soul taken in by Sentius's machinations. He won't get away with this much longer. You mean that book next to a golden statue in the theater? Tell me, how do you know that statue wasn't put there by Sentius himself? You can't know, can you? Surely, you're not one of those people who believes everything you read. As if a lie could be transformed into the truth by the simple act of writing it down. I disagree. I'll be guided by what is best for the city's people, and that means giving them the freedom to do as they wish. 
True, but that is simply because you are mistaken. I'm afraid not. We're stuck down here together, for better or worse. We're all going to have to make the best of it. You mean the children's fable, exploited by Sentius to scare us all into doing what he wants? Look, if I had a Roman plaque in my possession, I'd be happy to sell it to you, but I don't, so I can't. My name is Marcus Maliolus Gurgis. You seem to have confused me with someone else. You... you mean my heterochromia? I am guilty of nothing more than having different colored eyes. And I'm hardly the only person with the condition. Alexander the Great had it too, as it happens. I like to think it is simply the way the gods have chosen to mark a natural-born ruler. Nothing more. Well, I am not suffering from any delusions, as today's election will firmly establish. Unlikely, because it simply isn't true. Now, was there something else you wanted? <laughs> Are you insane? You barge into my villa, uninvited, and then make outrageous demands? Why would I withdraw from an election I'm bound to win? Don't talk nonsense. There's no such thing as the Golden Rule. How could you possibly know that? Nonsense! This is nonsense! I don't know how you know about my plans, but I'm absolutely sure Sentius is involved somehow. And now, I'm going to enjoy watching Demetrius kill him even more. Now, get out of here! You outstayed your very limited welcome. Still here? Get out of my villa before I have to... Still here. Fear is proof of a degenerate mind. <laughs> Whatever are you wearing? <laughs> oh, I wish Horatius would stop letting barbarians in here. What do you want? You know, some people say it's the creation of an all-seeing god who's watching everything we do. But what kind of an... Awful, incompetent god would let my sister go missing on his or her watch.
Oh, I'd say it to their faces if they had the courage to show themselves. Did you hear that? Curse you, you coward! Where is my sister? What do you have to say for yourself? No response. Nothing. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm telling you, this mysterious god of ours has to be asleep on the job. Either that, or, like people are saying, it really is just a children's fable my father is exploiting to frighten us into behaving. Oh, and I suppose I'll just have to take the word of a know-nothing barbarian who just arrived, will I? <laughs> I trust you can see your... We're finally alone. We have... I'm... Is that a... Seems rather brash, but... You mean Duilius, perhaps? Thank you. If you're snooping around in my possessions, you're wasting your time. Degenerate mind. What is it, citizen? All right. Keeping an eye on things, Horatius. As always, priestess. I have nothing to say to you, Caput Magda. Cerberus lifts his triple head and lets out his threefold braying. 
Livia, would you stop muttering like Medea over a cauldron? You'll scare away my customers. They follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. But they are ignorant. This again. You're in a world of your own, aren't you? Just as the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls. But it does not notice the crowds that come. Say it. Speak its name. Then it is true. I was right. I thought... I thought I saw it, but when the rest of them could not, I kept thinking I must have gone insane. I had to tell myself it was true over and over again, until I wasn't sure if I was deceiving myself. I, I must apologize if my words seem cryptic. I'd found comfort in reciting the Metamorphoses by our great poet Ovid. He gives such an uncanny description of this place. I cannot help but wonder if he himself came here. Would you like to hear it? I will do my best to remember the relevant verse. There is a downward path, gloomy with fatal yew trees. It leads through dumb silence to the infernal regions. The sluggish Styx exhales vapor, and by that way, the shadows of the newly dead descend, entombed with full rites and the ghosts of those, at last, given proper burial. The wide, thorny waste is cold and pallid, and the newly arrived shades are ignorant of the road that leads to the Stygian city, where Black Dis has his cruel palace. As the ocean accepts the rivers of all the world, so this place accepts all the souls, and is never too small for any populace nor notices the crowds that come. There the bloodless shadows wander without flesh or bone. Some crowd the forum, some the house of the ruler of the depths. Others follow their trades, imitating their previous lives. And still others incur punishment. I hope I have done it justice, and now we share a secret. It's as if you've lifted a great burden from my shoulders. Thank you, friend. I think I should rest. Friend, you have given me hope. May you follow in the footsteps of Hercules and return to the light of day. I love your clothes. So... Ah, oh, you're here. I'm so glad you decided to visit. I'm Aurelia, and there's a... Oh, I see. You prefer the company of men. Maybe... <sighs> I take back what I said. This... Certainly, for te whatever you. All right.
many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are? Oh. You live. All right, let me... I'll go. You, Sisyphus, attack or pursue the stone that always returns. I'm supposed to give you the Sylphium resin for Yulia. What? Quick, give it here. I'm just going to help her swallow this. I think she's going to be all right. <sighs> Name's Rufius. Better what? What business is that? You know what? And this will work? Oh, thank God. Finally, some relief. This is what I've been praying for. Maybe God hasn't abandoned me after all. Thank you. I've been in a lot of pain lately. The rheumatism, these cursed statues always watching in the crisis of faith. It was too much. Started messing with my head. <sighs> this is exactly what I needed to set it straight again. I owe you one. No idea what you're talking about? Meliolus. Not sure I trust Sentius. No. Uh, who do you want me to vote for? Fine. No idea what you're talking about? Ah, it's... I, and I know... I'll leave him alone from now on. It's not as if I was ever going to hurt him anyway. I was just... lashing out. I'm going to go and clean up the graffiti. Just... forget this ever happened. Will you?
Ah, and I... Uh, what demon or spirit told you about that? You went snooping in his place? That was risky. Have you spoken to him? Really? How did you manage that? Ah, poor fellow. I've heard that can really mess with a person's head. Well done for figuring that out. Really? That's promising. I'll keep an eye out for him. Nice to talk to you. Salve. Ah, oh, you again. See you around. Welcome back. Nice to talk to you. Fred, well, all right. I can't believe this is how it ends. Oh, no, 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 no. Wolf Pierce, what are you doing? That, what, what? I'm help. Thank you. Well, you don't. Have it's too late if I back. Oh, really? That. Changes things a little, but we're still in debt. Really? Wait. So, I guess you'd want me to work for you then. You'd do that for us. A couple of complete strangers. It seems today we're both blessed. This did not turn out how I thought. Thank you, friend. I never thought people like you existed. Thank you. I'll go and pay off our debts immediately. I just wish there was some way I could repay you. But I have nothing but the tunic on my back. I'll go and take care of things with Maliolus and tell Yulia the good news. Thanks again, friend. I'll never forget what you did for us.
What you did was extraordinary, and I'll never forget it. I'm thankful that you're here. Can I help you with something? Even if I had seen it, and I'm not saying I have, I couldn't in good conscience give it to you. That's all I'll say. What you're doing is disgusting, and it's not going to work. Shame on you. Even if I had seen it, and I'm not... Ah, oh, that... I hope you're coping. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of- Was there something you want? You mean my life story? Oh, well- Our father found good husbands for my sisters, but I wasn't, uh, cut out for that kind of life. So he found me a job as a scribe for a prominent merchant. It was a good life for a while, until seven months ago when the fires came. My colleagues and I, we must have had a hundred workers passing buckets of water, chanting prayers to Vulcan, but they fell on deaf ears. The fire was relentless and it claimed everything and everyone. Well, almost everyone. My employer told me to grab what valuables I could and flee for the Tiber, with the crowds. I remember diving into the river, and then... The next thing I knew, I was waking up on the riverbank not far from here. Thank you. I consider myself fortunate. At least I'm still alive. If that's your idea of a joke, it's not funny. Go away. Isn't the great temple majestic? 
a new face. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I beg your pardon? Oh my, that is quite a lot to take in. You'll have to give me a moment. Let's see, if that is indeed the case, I suppose we'd better figure out what to do about it, hadn't we? We don't have much to go on, except the old stories. I remember Hercules, the dead Herc, Sisyphus and Orph, and May Fortune. As I mentioned, both Orpheus and the problem is, though, for it's... If the stories are true, the problem... Leaving the... Truly. Then again, can you... Fast... It, that is strange. There are no rivers here. Hmm. Let me think on that. Right, because the current flows into the city through the aqueduct and into the upper cistern. I vaguely recall wondering what was in there, but the door at the back of the great temple is locked up tight. You might be able to get a key from the magistrate, but if that doesn't work, perhaps you can find another way in. Let me know if you find anything in there. May Fortuna guide you. All weapons are to be tossed into the chasm. Magistrate's orders. Oh, another one fresh out of the baths, I take it. We're finally at. We have? I must. Is that a. Seems rather brash. I think it's best if I hang on to it. You mean to ask, why am I unwilling to trust a newly arrived non-citizen with access to our water supply, the lifeblood of this city? I'm sorry, but that is simply out of the question. Yes, our water supply. From you. I wasn't born yesterday. Poisoning a city's water supply is the oldest trick in the Codex. Quite literally, Aeneas the Tactician wrote a siegecraft manual for military commanders some 300 years ago, recommending the poisoning or pollution of cisterns. And I'm beginning to wonder if the culprit we're looking for might, after all this, be you. Perhaps it was a mistake on my part to place so much trust in you. I'm glad to hear that. Now, uh, was there something else? Ask then. Good. Now, was... Of 
course. What is it? Well, if you stopped one person from breaking it and you're still here, then there must be someone else about to break it still. Allow me to explain. When I discovered the ritual to Proserpina, the instructions came with a warning about paradoxes. The crux of it is this. If you do anything to change the course of history in such a way that your very being here is impossible, you will have created a paradox. To illustrate, when the golden rule is broken, I will open the doorway that will bring you here to prevent it from being broken. If you manage to succeed in saving our lives, then I will have no reason to open the doorway, and you will never have come here. A paradox, you see? The same thing would happen if you, say, inadvertently, allowed me to die. If I can't summon you, then you can't be here, obviously. If either of those things were to happen, I am given to understand you would be flung back to your original time, having changed the course of history for us, and yourself. So the fact that you are still here means someone is going to break the golden rule, and there is yet work to do. Understand? Excellent. So, it looks like you'll have to continue your investigation. Now, was there anything else? Of course. What is it? Yes. Why do you say that? When you say he asked for help, you're not thinking of helping him, are you? Good. But still, he's been trying to enlist help with this for months. Even if you don't help him, it's only a matter of time before he becomes desperate enough to do it himself. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, but before we proceed, I must ask, are you sure he's the one? Ah, I see. It looks like you'll have to continue your investigation. Now... Thank you. I'll be waiting... Salve again, friend. I went and did as you asked, and it worked. How is it possible that you've just arrived here and you already know everyone and exactly what's about to happen to them? Uh, you're toying with me, right? Wait, you're not kidding, are you? That's the only way you could have known. You're a bit like... Oh, what was his name? Sisyphus, 
Yeah, that's the one. Old King Sisyphus. Sisyphus was a Greek king a long time ago. For daring to think he could outsmart the gods, he was given a terrible punishment. He was forced to push a great boulder up to the top of a hill. Only, just as it reached the top, it would roll all the way back down to the bottom, forcing him to start over and over and over again for all eternity. Just like you. Actually, now that I think about it, there are a bunch of old stories about the gods punishing people by making them do the same futile task over and over. Tantalus was made to grasp at fruit on a tree he could never quite reach. The Pelides had to keep fetching water in a sieve. Oh, and Ixion was strapped to a wheel going round and round forever. But, on the bright side, at least you're not stuck in the underworld like they all were. Anyway, I don't know which god you managed to upset to get yourself into this position, friend, but you seem all right to me. So, I'll tell you what. I'll keep doing whatever I can to help you. And you just focus on finding a way to break the cycle you're in. Anytime, friend. Now, I'm going to keep your secret. Although, it's not as if I'll remember this next time we talk anyway, right? <laughs> oh, and if our conversations ever start to annoy you, just tell me you're busy. I know when I'm not wanted. May fortune smile on you, friend. Salve again? No. Well, it's a long one, and kind of sad, but I don't mind telling it. I'm a farmer. Always have been. I grew up in a small village in Britannia, Camulodunum, with my parents and two little sisters. Lovely part of the world. One day, when I was about 20, my father and I were in the top paddock, loading our cart, when some Roman legionaries came along, demanding produce for their men. My father told me to run into the house for his axe, and so I did. I sprinted so fast I almost threw up. But by the time I got back, he was bleeding out on the ground, and our cart was empty. That was my first encounter with the legions. My mother died of a broken heart soon after, and things went downhill from there. I took over the farmstead, but I was young, and it was a struggle. More raiding started before too long. We'd come outside in the morning to find animals missing, our stores pillaged. These legion thugs just took whatever they wanted. One night, when my sisters and I had nothing left to steal, there was a knock at the door. I knew who they were, and what they wanted. I got my father's old axe, pulled the door open real quick, and before that soldier knew it, split his face right down the middle. But there were more of them. I never saw how many, because the next thing I knew, I was waking up with a mouth full of dirt and lungs full of smoke. My home was reduced to ash. My sisters, dead. And they left me alive to see what they'd done still burns whenever I think about it. Yeah, well, I wasn't the only one this happened to. It wasn't long before Boudicca led thousands of Britons in a rebellion against the Romans. Unfortunately, there were just too many of them. And those of us who survived, they enslaved. So, then I found myself being transported all the way to Rome to be sold to the highest bidder. I spent a few years working for my new master, learning the Romans ways, romanized my name and everything. Tried to escape a couple of times, but they always found me, and I'd just end up right back where I was. I'd probably still be there too, if it wasn't for the stampedes breaking out. You see, about seven months ago, an enormous fire broke out in Rome. Everybody was running down toward the river, screaming and shouting. I'd never seen anything like it. Human beings acting like cattle. I got swept up with them somehow, and the rest was a blur. The next thing I knew, some stranger was dragging me out of a river. Stumbled across this place, and started my life over again. That's what I thought too, for a while. But it seems the gods aren't done tormenting me yet. See, I finally had my own farm again, safe from the grasping hands of the Romans. Or, so I thought. 
Until Sentius the Decurion demanded I hand over all my produce. It's for the good of us all, he says. Only he takes the best bits for himself, of course. He even told me if I refuse his demands, I'll break the golden rule. I'm not sure I believe him, but then, what if he's right? So, it turns out our dear old magistrate is no better than the Legion thugs who took everything from me. I'm right back where I began. But don't you worry. Nemesis is waiting. And he'll get his. One day. He'll get his. Uh, forget I said that last part, will you? I get carried away sometimes. Thanks, friend. I knew I liked you. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling. Was there something else you wanted to talk about? Well, as much as I'd love to get out of here, the harvest's always more fruitful in another man's field, isn't it? But Scintilla, Sentius' daughter, went missing a few weeks back. Could be she found a way out. If anyone knows for sure, it'll be her sister, Sentia. But she'd never tell the likes of me. Oh, I don't give it much thought these days. I mean, everybody here's got their own view about what we need to do to survive. But I say, let's spend less time arguing about what it means to be good and just get on with it, you know? Uh, I can't see how I could vote for either candidate. I don't like Sentius much, but Maliolus is almost as bad. Even I could do a better job. Me, a farmer. And I've never given a speech or put on a toga in my life. I've bounced the idea around once or twice, mainly as a way of getting Dooley set free. God knows Sentius is never going to do it. But from what I hear, Maliolus has the election stitched up. Nobody's going to take him on and win. And maybe that's not such a bad thing. I mean, he talks a lot about freedom, so I'm hoping if he's elected, he'll release Dooley from his cell. That's good enough for me. Because Sentius put him there. Poor Dooley was just wandering around looking for some imaginary treasure. Now a magistrate accused him of being a thief. That's nonsense, of course. Dooley's the most harmless man you'll ever meet. But Sentius really has it in for him, for some reason. And how could you... Oh, wait. You've seen it in another time loop, haven't you? Well, in that case, we need to find a way to make sure Maliolus loses. Better yet, get him to withdraw altogether. If you can do that, and Sentius is the only candidate left, I'll run against him. Deal? All right, friend. Hope you find a way to break that cycle you're in. Fortune smile on you, brother.
citizen. Ah, oh, you again. So you And um, deeply honored to have been elected to your magistrate. Magistrate, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you. I'm delighted and deeply honored to be elected your magistrate. And, and now. <laughs> And now, I make this solemn promise to you, good citizens, um, under my leadership, you will greatly enjoy the freedom you deserve. And I should walk on up. Walk on up. Eggshell. No more should you walk on eggshell. Did you just scale the wall to my villa somehow? Well... Why would I... You fool. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and what you're doing with that bow on your back? Oh, sounds serious. Yulia! Poor Virgil. Poor Rufius, too, I guess. All right, got it. How did you... All right, of course. I'll make sure this gets to him. All right, let me see. I'll go. Salve, friend. 
I've got to run. Welcome. But why? You know why. But how am I going to defend myself against someone else with a weapon? There are no other weapons in the city. We all went along with the magistrate's weapons so it wouldn't be Greetings. an issue. I'm George. That's why I've got to get in first before someone else My friend, your it. word... Uh. And in a city full of Romans, you are asking me... My name is Yori. They do this all the time. I am fl... At first, I put... But my point is this. If you want to know who stole an old Greek name, the plague you seek was pilfered from a collection of old Greek... Uh, he cannot help it. And besides, I hope that our... Welcome. Yulia. I'm so glad you didn't go through with it. It wasn't for lack of trying. And now Maliolus is going to... Wait. Why do you look so happy? We're free. Maliolus just released us and we never have to set foot in that villa again. What? How? Galerius arranged it somehow. Really? That's... incredible. Oh, what a relief. I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. Just rest up, get your strength back, and we'll celebrate properly when you're ready. I will. Thank you, Olpius. But I will. Shalom, friend. 
Centilla and I were in love. And then, 22 days ago, she went missing. All right. One night a few months ago, when I was cleaning Maliolis' villa, I heard a young woman singing. It was the most beautiful thing I had ever heard. I wasn't allowed out, so once everyone else was asleep, I climbed up the inside of the villa and onto the roof, just to see where that sound was coming from. And that's when I saw her, standing in the garden of the magistrate's villa. I just sat there on the roof, listening to her with my chin on my knees. And for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful. And then she looked up and saw me and she smiled. I knew at that moment the fates had brought me to her. And from the moment she asked my name with this warmth and curiosity, I knew I'd have done anything for her. And so for weeks on end, each night I'd climb out of the villa and into her father's garden. We'd hold hands and talk about all the things we'd do once we got out of here. Like having our own vineyard. And then one morning I woke up and everyone was out searching for her. They said she'd vanished in the night. All I could do was keep my head down and try to hide how beside myself I was. All I know is she loved me. And if she had known a way out, she would have told me. She'd never have taken her own life. And there's no way anybody could have killed her under the golden rule. I can't prove it, but I just know she's still alive somehow. Even now, it's as if I can hear her voice in my head, crying out to me. That can only mean one thing. Somebody abducted her. I have no idea how or who would want to do something like that to such a sweet, lovely girl. But what else could have happened? My guess? Maliolus had something to do with it. He is without doubt the most evil man I have ever known. I have no idea where he'd be keeping her, but there is one room in his villa, upstairs, which is always locked. I've never seen the inside of it, and I haven't been able to steal a key without breaking the golden rule. But I have a feeling that if you could get in there somehow, it would shed light on a great many things. Let me know what you discover. Hmm, a golden bow, just like Apollo and Diana's. Shalom. You mean where am I from and all that? Judea, originally. But when I was a child, I moved to Rome with my family, Romanized my name and spent most of my life in the Jewish district of Trans-Tiberim, across the Tiber from the main city. That's where I was when the fires broke out. Everyone was running toward the river and I, listening to my inner contrarian, ran the other way. Every road leading out of Rome was in chaos, full of people with all their belongings in carts and brigands preying on them. Several hours down the Appian Way, I saw another Jewish family being attacked by three opportunists. So I picked up a branch from the side of the road and went to defend them. I can only assume they got the better of me because the next thing I knew, I was waking up in a forest by a river not far from here with no memory of how I got there. It's strange though, because I still had my purse on me. Why would a robber knock me unconscious and throw me in a river, but not take my coins? A lot of good it did me, and that family. I sometimes wonder what happened to them. I don't, but even if I did, I'm not going anywhere. I have unfinished business. Well, neither of us have a couple of hours to stand around talking about theology, law, and collective punishment, so I guess you're looking for a pithy summary? <laughs> You remind me of an old story from my people about Hillel the Elder. 
he was approached by a Gentile and asked to explain the entire Torah while he stood on one foot. Obliging, he replied, What is hateful to you, do not do to another. That is the whole Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and learn. Of course, what I want to know is, what kind of a god sees a young woman abducted and does nothing about it? Not my god, that's for sure. Maybe you don't. I feel it in my bones. Sentius, I suppose. I'd have to be insane to vote for Maliolus after what he did to me. All right, friend. Thanks for the chat. Citizen. Isn't the great temple majestic? And um, deeply honored to have been elected your magistrate. Thank you, thank you. I'm delighted and deeply honored to be elected your magistrate. <laughs> and now, <laughs> and now, uh, I make this solemn promise to the good citizens. And now, and now, I make this solemn promise to the good citizens. Under my leadership, you will finally enjoy the freedom we deserve. And uh, yes, uh, but, but, uh, no more shall you walk on, um, uh, walk on, uh, um, well, um, eggshell, eggshells. Yes, 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 yes. No more shall you walk on eggshells, fearing simply to live and breathe. <laughs> Thereby, I, I hereby announce um, a day of, well, a, 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 a day of celebration, I had... Uh... Did you just scale the wall? Well... <laughs> Are you... What? Don't talk... How... Could you possibly know that? Nonsense! This is nonsense! I don't know how you know about my plans, but I'm absolutely sure Sentius is involved so- And now, I'm going to enjoy what- Now, get out of here! You out- What do you want? You're not supposed to be in here. Talk. What business could you possibly have with me? My marital affairs are no concern of yours. Thank you very much. I think a better question is, why am I being interrogated by a stranger who just barged into my villa? I have quite enough marriage trouble already, without having to explain to my husband why I am receiving strange men in private. Preferably the way you came in, by which I mean, please leave. I think it's about to be broken if you don't hurry up and leave. Hmm, an intriguing proposition. Go on. Hmm, perhaps you're not as silly as those clothes make you look. What makes you say that? You know, 
I may have the very thing you're looking for. Some time ago, when he still cared for me, he wrote me a love letter. Only, he used the wrong name. Now, addressing one's wife by the wrong name is not unheard of among philandering Romans. But in this case, the name he got wrong was his own. I confronted him about it, and he stammered through some incoherent response. I let it go, eventually, and yet... Questions have lingered in the back of my mind ever since. But... Wait a minute. Why exactly are you helping me? To withdraw. Listen. I may not be Penelope to his Ulysses, but to ruin his plans to become a magistrate? You must think me quite mad. I've heard enough. Get out of here at once. Domitius, come quickly. We're being robbed. The many shall suffer. The sins of the one. Salve, friend. Mind telling me who you are and what you're doing with that bow on your back? All right, then. Uh That's quite an impressive bow you have there. Just like Diana. Don't you just love springtime? Don't you just love springtime? Thank you! 
So thank you. I am delighted and <laughs> I'm not supposed to be in here. Talk. Hmm. Hmm. You know, some now I can I let it go, but Oh, aren't you charming? I'm quite sure my husband would seethe with impotent rage if he overheard you say that. I love it. It seems our interests are aligned. I imagine knowing his true identity will give me the leverage I need to manage him appropriately. But first, I need you to do something for me. I want you to bring me some wine. Just one small urn should do it. Oh, don't look at me like that. I know this must be hard for you to wrap your sweet little pleb head around. So what do you need me to spell out? Let me tell you something about Maliolus. He talks a lot about freedom, but what he doesn't tell you is that he means freedom for men. After all I've done for him, counselling him through his entire election campaign, and he had the audacity to lock me in here. He said it was for my own good, and that my drinking was unbecoming of a lady, let alone the wife of a magistrate. I'll show him unbecoming. Tonight, at his victory party, I'm going to get good and merry, and if he tries to discipline me again, I'll threaten to expose his true identity in front of everyone. I am so looking forward to it. You mean, aside from the fact that I'm locked in this room and Domitius is right outside the villa, because there's barely any left in the city. In fact, there's only one small urn, as far as I'm aware. And getting it won't be easy. So, you'll help me. Thank you. Here's the letter. Now, Perhaps you can tell me who Quinctius really is. What? He's... Oh no. That's... Um... Quite a lot more serious than I imagined. I only wanted some leverage over him, not to destroy him. Give me that immediately. Nobody else must know. What? No. You... you tricked me, you mendacious little Sturkus. It was a lie of omission. You were planning this all along and you deliberately concealed it. May Jupiter cut you down. I curse you. I curse your life and mind and memory. May you be unable to walk or eat or drink. May this drag you to the depths. This is outrageous. Demetrius doesn't usually let anyone in here without a hefty tribute, so you must have been desperate to see me. Well, what do you want? Ha! <laughs> you... What? I... Uh, so... It finally caught up with me. I suppose that makes you... What? One of Nero's assassins? 
So, you're not going to kill me? Oh, so much work and money. Oh, well, if I do it, you'd let me live? Fine. Ruling this cesspit of a city would have been beneath me anyway. I'll have Domitius notify the priestess of my withdrawal and release those two from debt bondage. There, you got what you wanted. Now, please, leave my villa and never speak to me again. Demetrius, are you listening? Yes, sir. I've made a decision to release Yulia and Ulpius and withdraw from the election. I want you to go and inform Equitia. Sir? Are you under duress, sir? I I've just had a, a, a change of heart. But you were on track to be magistrate, sir. All that work, all that money wasted. Those are my orders. Carry them out. <sighs> As you wish, sir. Priestess, Maliolus has decided to withdraw from the election. Oh, well, that's surprising. But thank you for telling me. I'll let everyone know. It's you now. I've bounced the idea around, but man. he did. Oh, that was unexpected. I wonder what could have possessed him to do that. Well, I guess it's time for me to step up then. I'll let Equitia know I'll be running. All right, see you around. It's your... Oh, and now, what's in your... All right. <laughs> Oi! How did you get in there, you cheeky little Sturkus? If I cop an earful from Maliolus, I'll be coming for you. What now? He's not here. Dunno. The little cap at murder escaped earlier this morning, while I was taking Yulia to the clinic. He can't have gone far, but if you find him, 
Tell him the punishment he gets for coming back on his own won't be as bad as if I have to go looking for him. <laughs> I'm not going. Whatever. That's quite an impressive bow you have there. Just like a new face, Arvid. It must be completed by dusk. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Galerius, the challenger. Why do you ask? All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend, unless they're running, of course. Hmm. That there are. I can't allow the percept, but if it's. Certainly. See you again. Name's Rufius. Sentius. Militar. No. What business? Willow. Fine. I. I... Sentius. No. Uh. Fine. I'll vote for Galerius. But no more favors. We're square. See you around. Greetings and salutations. Greetings. Uh, my f Sendius, I suppose. I wouldn't say I hold him in the highest esteem, but he has managed to keep... Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. I hope that our paths cross... Ah, a new fake. Well, Sintius seems to know what he's doing. My vote isn't for sale, if that's what you're asking. Nice to talk to you. Salve. Hello there, friend. Well, I'll take your word for it, but... Oh well, let me know if you change your mind. For now, can I help you with something? Sentius, I suppose. Stability's always... Yeah? And what's he gonna do for me? He's nothing. Certainly. For a few thousand denarii. Nothing illegal about it. Well, that's a shame. Very well. Help! You have... Thank you. What? Uh, all right. Stop right there. I Thank you.
curse you, cultist. Ah, it's you again. Hope you're settled now. All right. What are you doing in here? She need What? You leave? Hopefully that. Ah, uh, look. If you don't want to tell me, that was like the you just and in the mean. That's a sh friend welcome ah another stoic perhaps we've all been way i used to lay awake at night i still all right i can't believe this is how it ends oh no 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 we'll pay that's what what i'm <laughs> it's too late for that if I backed out... Uh, what? We're... We're free! We're free! Thank you. It seems fortune smiles on us after... I just wish there was some way I could repay you. I'll go and take care of things.
The newcomer arranged it somehow. Really? That's... incredible. Oh, what a relief. I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. Just rest up, get your strength back, and we'll celebrate properly when you're ready. I will. Thank you, Olpius. I will. Shalom. 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 Sentius, I suppose. Galerius, the farmer. He's a good man, but I think he's more valuable on the farm than as magistrate. Hmm. <laughs> 